Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to answer question number five uh, from the June 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 International A Level at Excel paper. This question here is about trigonometry. So it says in this question, you must show all stages of your working. Solutions relying entirely on calculator technology are not acceptable. So we've got to solve for values of pi between zero and pi, for values of x, sorry, between zero and pi. The equation x minus 2 in brackets times root 3 secant x plus 2 close brackets equals 0. Now, uh, some students would start this off by trying to expand the brackets because there's brackets, oh, there's brackets here, let's expand them. We're going to give a bit more thought to this question. Because it's you have a product of two factors which equals 0, it's kind of like in the form that we like for us to be able to solve equations. When you have two products, we have a pair of, of numbers or even more than that, if you have a product of numbers which give you zero, then we know for sure either one of them must be zero or the other one must be zero. So you end up with two solutions to that equation. Okay, if, it's, if the product equals anything else, you can't say oh, either one of them is that number. Like if you said A times B equals five, I can't say that means either A is five or B is five. That's not true. You can't say that for sure. But if one, if the product of them is zero, then one of them must be zero. So when you've got something like this, we have a product of two factors gives you zero. Then we can say either x minus two is equal to zero, in which case x equals two, which is one of our solutions because uh, two is within the range. Remember, uh, pi is three point one four two. All right. So the the value of x being two is within our range. One of the solutions straight away. Or we can say the square root of three times the secant of x plus two equals zero in which case we can say the square root of three times the secant of x equals negative two and then we can say um, secant x equals negative two over root three All right now we know that the secant um, ratio is the reciprocal uh, trig function for the cosine if you, if, you, if you forget, it's easy to remember the, the, the third letter tells you which it's from. Okay, so secant cosine. It's reciprocal is cosine. And um, uh, cosecant x, we can see the third letter is s, so that's the sine ratio. And cotangent t, that's the tan x. The, those are the reciprocals of those. So the third letter is c, in case you forget. That means the reciprocal is cos cosine. So if secant x equals minus 2 over root 3, then cosine of x will be the reciprocal of that. Okay, the reciprocal of this side and the reciprocal of that side. So it's negative root 3 over 2. Okay, so this is one of those ratios for an exact value, which we should know. You can use your calculator, no problem. You know that the cosine of um, 30 degrees is going to give us minus, is going to give us root 3 over 2. Okay, so the cosine of negative... Uh, root 3 over 2 is going to be um, that's going to be 150 degrees okay which is going to be basically this is going to give, give you pi over um, pi over 6 okay so it's going to be 5 pi over 6 so if you put this in your calculator it's going to give you 5 pi over 6 straight away okay so you know if you have it, your calculator in radian mode you'll notice uh, radian mode good so if you do inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2 then you'll notice what we get is going to be 5 pi over 6 okay because we know it's a negative ratio so we're going to be in this quadrant okay for cosine okay it's negative cosine remember is positive in these two okay so it's negative so we're in that quadrant and the associated acute angle is going to be pi over 6 so it's going to be 5 pi over 6, okay? So you end up with um, 5 pi over 6. Okay, you can also think about it from the graph. If you want to, <coughs> that's a cosine curve, okay? We're looking at negative root 3 over 2. So we're looking at this angle. This is the principal angle, which is going to be basically, you know, the same as the angle that we get there, but it's a negative version of it. Anyway, so we get 5 pi over 6. That's the that's um, the solution for x. Now, are there any other solutions? Okay, the other solution is going to be over here. 
which is outside of our range. If we think about the next solution, the next solution is going to be after, um, it's going to be this sec section over here. This is going to be the next solution. Okay, um, for the cosine curve. No, sorry, it's not going to be this, this sec section. The next solution is going to be over here, which is more than pi. Okay, so the next solution is going to be over here, which is more than pi. Okay, because remember, it's negative in these two. We're looking for these two quadrants. So the next solution is going to be pi plus 5 pi over 6. Or you can say 2 pi minus pi over 6. Okay, for cosine, you get the main angle, and then you've got 360 minus the main angle. 360 minus the main angle is going to give you this angle over there. Okay, All right. So we can see that that's going to be um, 2 pi minus 5 pi over 6 is going to be more than pi. It's going to be outside of the range. So if we did 2 pi minus 5 pi over 6, you'll have, that's 12 pi over 6, minus 5 pi over 6, which is 7 pi over 6, but that's outside of our range. Our range stops at pi, which is like 6 pi over 6. So the, therefore, the only two solutions are x equals 2 and 5 pi over 6. Those are the two solutions to this problem. So there's your answer to part 1 of this question. Now we're going to go into part 2. It says solve for theta between 0 and 360 degrees. So we're going to go to our calculator and we're going to change it now into degree mode okay 10 sine theta equals 3 cosine 2 theta now and this is one of the type of questions which people they 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 realize we have to change this so that the angles are the same you know type of angle this is a you know this is 2 theta this is theta we have to change them so they're both they're both the same now of course it's easier for us to re reduce this down from a double angle to a single angle so we have to know our double angle formulae which are not in the formula sheet and we should memorize them, okay? All right, but they're based upon something which is in the formula sheet. So if you ever forget, what does this become, all right? Then what we can do is you can say, okay, cosine of 2 theta stems or begins from cosine theta plus theta. All right, you can rewrite it in that form. And you can think about the formula cosine A plus B, which is in the formula sheet, which gives you cosine A, sine A, minus, sorry, cosine A, cosine B, minus sine a sine b that's from the formula sheet let me write that a bit neater okay so the formula sheet we have one of the formulae is cosine a and this is what it says a plus or minus b in the formula sheet it says this which is cosine a cosine b and it says minus plus sine a and sine b okay that's what it says in the formula sheet so if there's a plus between them there's a minus between them when you split it up so here we can use that same format here, but it's just then both of them are going to be cosine. It's going to be cosine theta and then cosine theta. It's going to be sine theta and sine theta. So co cosine theta times uh, cosine theta is cosine squared theta. So you'll end up with cosine squared theta minus sine. Sine theta times sine theta will give you sine squared theta. Right? So this is an important for us to then we can say, all right, I want to now rewrite this in terms of either just cosine squared theta or just sine squared theta. Now, because we have a sine theta over here, which is difficult for us to change because it's not squared, then we should think about, okay, let's rewrite this so that it's in terms of sine squared theta. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, okay, that means cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which started off as cosine 2 theta, by the way. I want to ch express it in terms of sine. And I know that cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta so you have one minus sine squared theta which this is then you've got minus the sine squared theta that, that there's a, that, that is there already that gives you one minus two sine squared theta All right now by the time it gets to the exam you should be able to quote this straight away without going through all of these steps that i went went through here i'm just going through those steps in case you don't understand where it comes from or if you ever get confused in the exam um is it one minus two sine squared theta or is it 2 sine squared theta minus 1 and you just like any mean you mind anymore? You should know how it where it comes from. So you'll be able to tell. If you want to if you want to express it in terms of sine squared theta, then this will change. This will be cosine theta cosine squared theta and then minus in brackets 1 minus cosine squared theta. You'll get 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. All right, so those two forms, but we want this form here because on this side you have a sine theta. If everything's in terms of sine squared and sine thetas, we can solve the equation easily. So now we've got 10 sine theta equals 3 times. So instead of cosine 2 theta, I can write 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. 
And now when I expand this, I have 10 sine theta equals 3 minus 6 sine squared theta. And I can bring everything to one side and make it say equal 0, getting ready to use a zero product property if need be. So I add 6 sine squared theta to both sides. So I'll have 6 sine squared theta. I have plus 10 sine theta minus 3 equals 0. Now, let's see. To make life a bit easier, let's say let... For example, u equals sine theta. If u equals sine theta, then u squared would be sine squared theta. It's just a way of recognizing this as a familiar quadratic. This is 6u squared plus 10u minus 3 equals 0. So we've got to try to solve this. Let's first try to solve this by factorizing if it's possible. Let's think about it. Two numbers have to multiply to give you negative 18 as a product, and their sum has to be 10. Okay, negative 18 and 10. Um, the only ways of getting 18, 18 times 1 doesn't work. 9 times 2 doesn't work. 6 times 3 doesn't work. And that's it. So we can't factorize. So we have to either complete the square or use a quadratic formula. Now, because you have a 6 here, I think it's easier to just use a quadratic formula, in which case u is going to be here, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so in this case, we have u is equal to 6, and, um, sorry, we have a is equal to 6, and b is equal to 10, and c is equal to negative 3. So we can say u is going to be minus b, so it's minus 10, plus or minus the square root of b squared, uh, which is 100, minus 4 times a times c, that's going to be plus 4 times, um, that's going to be, 12 times 6, that's going to be 96 over 2a, 2 times 6. Well, let me just make sure of that. We have um, 100 plus 4 um, times 6 times 3, 172. What did we get to 24 times 3? Yeah, should be 72, sorry. Okay. Let's just do like this, minus 10, plus or minus, we put plus the square root of, we have b squared, which is going to be 10 squared, so that would be 100, um, times minus, b squared minus 4 times, so 4 times a, which is 6, times c, which is negative 3, over 2 times a over 12. That gives me minus 5 plus or minus root 43 over 6. Okay. Minus 5 plus or minus root 43 over 6 in the end when you when it simplifies. So you have u equals minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 43 over 6. So therefore we can say, we know u is sine theta. So we can say either sine theta is minus 5 plus or minus root 40. Either sine theta is minus 5 plus root 43 over 6. Okay, in which case theta is going to be what? Inverse sine of the last answer. It's going to be, theta is going to be 15.0447. 15.0447. Okay, and we know that there's another angle between 0 and 360, which is our limit which shares the same ratio as this. For sine, you just do 180 minus this angle. Okay, so we have this angle here. We know that sine is positive in these two uh, quadrants, A, S, T, C, right? And the other place was going to be over here. If this is 15 point something, this is going to be 180 minus 15 point something. Or if you look at the sine curve, you have your sine curve like this. This angle is 15 point something. There's another angle over here, which is because symmetry, the same distance from 180 below it, then this is for above zero. So it's 180 minus this angle. So it's going to be 180 minus this angle. So we do 180, take away the answer, which gives us 164.955, 164.955. So theta equals 15.0 and um, 165.0. To one decimal place, is that what they asked? They didn't ask, so we give it to one decimal place because that's the, the standard for 
and was in degrees, one decimal place. So 15.0 and 165.0. And then we have all sine theta equals minus 5 minus root 41 over 6. So if you try to find what that is, let's go back to this and make this a negative. And that gives us minus, it's going to be negative 5 plus root 43 over 6. So we press inverse sine of the answer. It's going to say math error. Why? The reason why it's going to say that, if we go back to this, if we go back to, go back. Okay. Okay, if I go back to this, if I find the value of this, it's minus 1.92, so it's less than minus 1. So, of course, we know that the sine curve and the cosine curve, they go like this. So, the lowest they get to is minus 1, and they never go to negative 1.92. So, here, we have no solution. So, therefore, our only solution is going to be theta equals 15.0 and 165.0. And those are the two solutions within our range which satisfy the equation. There's no other solutions within our range. If we were to find other solutions in the range, we would have to add 360 to these two angles and take away 360 from these angles, okay? And there's two ways you can think about that. One is from, if, you, if you're used to the cast diagram, for example, the next time that you're going to come across these positions, this is 15 degrees and this is 165 degrees, the next time is going to go when you've gone through one complete revolution. So what's one com complete revolution after this? basically 360 plus this and what's one complete revolution after this all the way around so it's basically 360 plus this so you are you basically you take this angle you add 360 to them so it's 165 plus 360 15 plus 360 it will take you to the next place and if you want to carry on going you can add another 360 and another one and if you go on the negative side then you can say okay 15 minus 360 will take us back here again on the negative side and 165 take away 360 will take you to the negative side there. But here we stop at 360, and there's nothing in this part here. All right, so therefore we finish. Or if you think about this, the sine curve, all right, how the sine curve goes, just draw just a couple of, you know. So basically, um, supposing this is the sine curve from 0 to 360, we found two angles here and here. The next time they repeat, the same value is going to be over here, which is basically because it repeats every 360, that, that is going to repeat it over there. That's going to be repeated over there, and it continues on. And in the negative side as well, 360, this angle minus 360 will tell you the place before, and this angle minus 360 will tell you the place before. In this case, we're stopping at, at zero. We're starting at zero, we're ending at 360. Those are the only two solutions that we have. Okay, so there's your answer to question five, part two. Pretty straightforward question five here. It's pretty simple trick question here for, um, you know, for P3 paper, nothing really complicated about that. So that concludes question number five from this paper. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist, which will appear at the top of the page in this region over here. Other questions from the topic of trigonometry, uh, trig identities and equations, you can find in the playlist that will appear over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. And um, you can watch a video here, which will explain how you can use the channel to find those things that you might be in, interested in from the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.